As the digital age has transformed our world, we find fraud changing faster, becoming more intricate and elusive. Where do stories of resilience meet the tactics of today? I'm Brian Davis, head of trust and safety at Dodgeball, and this is Chronicles of a Fraud Fighter. Every episode, we blend powerful narratives with the actionable insights to arm you for your own fraud fighting journey. Today, I'm thrilled to have Alex, co-founder of Yofi with us. Welcome to the front line, Alex. Hi, Brian. Thanks for inviting me onto the pod. I'm super excited. Today, we're going to get a little bit more into your story, kind of get an understanding of really how you came about. You worked at some pretty notable, cool companies, and I think a lot of us just kind of happen to fall into the fraud world. So really, I mean, for my own sake, this is one of my favorite bits of really understanding everyone's journey is different. Can you tell me a little bit about the path that led you to become a fraud fighter? Oh, God, I don't even think I knew what fraud was when I was in college and grad school. I was a chemist. I thought I was going to be a doctor, dropped out of my Ph.D., ended up studying AI, ML for robotics before that was cool, somehow managed to end up in a job at a big retail company where I started doing machine learning there, ended up being on a special projects team. And one of the projects was like, hey, could you use machine learning to fight bots, abusers, and fraud, which started my fraud journey. And I was like, sure, I know what a bot is. I understand how to sort of detect and look for them, but I don't get the point. And that opened the biggest can of worms, which really, really got me diving deep on our fraud journey. How does being a chemist actually translate to where you are today? Oh my God, chemistry is so fun. So like everyone will come up to me and be like, oh, I hated organic chemistry. And first of all, it's a computational chem. Oh, you're you're that person. (laughs) I was not a computational (laughs) chemist, which is like just a weird way of saying computer science, love child chemistry. So it was all analytical skills, all understanding data, all processing data. And on the fraud side I sit on is very data heavy. So it was just a really nice... Okay, instead of it being chemical compounds, just look at data and mysteries on the commerce side. So you're working on a lot of data-oriented growth projects. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. So specifically anything from international expansion to how search algorithms get impacted by bots, bad actors, scrapers, to how do we do bot mitigation, specifically in China, which is the Wild West, I think, of bots and abusers. What do you learn from your time doing that? I I think people don't look at the data enough because when we started looking at like average order values or how many people were signing up for new birthdays or new subscriptions, it was like up 200% AOV was down. It was like, there's no way 500,000 plus people are all having a birthday in June, right? Like probabilistically, it's almost impossible. So what I learned is like, don't trust the data, understand what's impacting the data, And go a step further, like I think fraud is very narrow, where if you're fraud, you're focusing on like chargebacks or network or someone taking down the site, but it impacts everything and you need to look at it through a very holistic lens. How do you uncover the birthday spike? Was that one of the more bolder attempts you've come across? Oh, it was so in your face where it was like, I don't understand how these people are making it through. Like, I don't know who looked at it and be like, oh, cool. You know, we're up by new birthday coupons by 200%. This seems legit. And you just kind of scratch your head for a second. You're like, something feels off. Something's fishy. Let's just take a step deeper. Because when you think about like your PL statements, like you're losing 15%. That's not a small number or small discount to be like, okay, let's allow this to happen. So you uncovered it. You start to look at it like, really, what are you thinking? As you're going through this process, something's off. This doesn't feel right. But we know in our field, we just can't stop there. Oh, I was starting to look at like, is there a pattern of these? Are people signing up? What products are they buying? What is the rate of new coupon rate or rate of people getting new coupons? Is there any patterns? And it was all the same five people redeeming the same coupon, buying the same product, shipping to the same place. And it's like, okay, not 500,000 people, it's five people acting as 500,000. Of those five people, what really were you able to tie those pieces back together? Obviously, to be able to scale like that, there's probably some type of automation they're using because it probably would take years for them to just input new accounts 
and all these, and even just remember what was the date that I used or what was the month that I used. Yeah, they all had the same domain. It was something funny, like it was like all football, old football players' names. So I'm not a good person, but it was like Tony Romo, like a bunch of these similar names at like football.usa something. And it was like a fake domain, all the same pattern. There's no way 500,000 football players are signing up. Their IP was similar. Their their network detail was similar. It was just so, it was so blatant where it was like they're hitting a backend API and it's within seconds of this account creation. And like the birthdays were like funny where it was like their birthday was the same day, same year because they're trying to get the coupon for their birthday. So it was like June, oh, June 1st, 1988 for all of them. And they're like not even trying to hide. And that's kind of really the problem sometimes, especially with scale. It's like minimal effort. They just need a small per percentage to get through. They get the value of the return of what they see or what they want out of it. But operationally, it can take, depending on how your team's actually set up for it, can take forever to comb through all that activity to ultimately just tie it back to five people. Those five people are putting so much stress into the overhead of your team as you're going, kind of like came to the realization, these five people have just caused me the biggest headache. What? What really, what lessons did you really take away from it? And how did that shape your approach to detection moving forward? I think I have some guesses with you being a co-founder, but I'd love to hear it from you. It shapes where like, People think of fraud as a cost center where it's not. Usually people want to listen to the fraud team last and we're usually the loudest people in an org. And it's shaped where it's like you need to make this holistic. It needs to be in the center of everything. Don't trust the data at hand. Don't just say, oh, great, new membership is up. Like, hooray, let's all celebrate. Or, hey, returns are down. Why are returns down? Why are cancellations down? It's usually related or can be back tied to fraud. And so it made me co-found Yofi because at the two previous corporations that I was at, fraud was the last thing to listen to. Fraud was like at the end scale, oh, it's a cost center, but it's important, but not at the same time. Like we're building business decisions on data and the data isn't tied together and they're not even understanding, hey, if someone returns an item, is it a good person? Is it a bad person? If someone redeemed a coupon, is it a good or bad person abusing? Or not abusing and it really focuses on the intentionality of why people should care like not every sale is a good sale and i think that's something that you learn in fraud it is but it's also an uphill battle of like you deal with exactly what you said why should i care and it's a huge kind of like argument of this thing i have these conversations with a lot of people helping people of overcome these these are like they're the experts but it's how you how you do deliver your message, this audience that challenges you with like, why should I care? How do you think about that? I think we were in an interesting time, right? Because 2020 was like the push of direct to consumer, whatever we can do to push everything online, grow as quickly as possible. So macroeconomic changes. Now it's, hey, what can I make sure that I can cut from my bottom line? What can I do to make sure that my business is running as efficiently as possible? So now fraud and understanding these abusers become more important, right? Because it's like, I don't necessarily want to give everyone 15% off. Oh, crap. Returns are costing me a lot of money. So now I have to think about how is this impacting my business? And now I'm going to go back to the fraud team I ignored for three years and be like, hey, actually, what you said was really important. Let's circle it in because I'm making decisions off of fake people, fake data. And I'm trying to scale a company while making it efficient at the same time. It's really hard for me, at least for me in those moments, to not just say I told you so and be professional, but that's the important piece right there. I finally have attention. We finally have awareness. I can't ruin it with like that. As much as it might satisfy me, I'll lose those years instantly. I just can't do that. Looking back at the last year, obviously you've gone through a whole lot and taking some of those past learning. One, all that data at scale, how to navigate the business, the politics, and then actually growing, building, and founding a business. Kind of centered around all those previous learnings. If you were to hyper-focus in kind of like the short window of the last 12 months of what you've really accomplished, like what are some of the biggest lessons you take away from that? 
The biggest lessons that I would take away is understanding intention and understanding what people are doing within, like, let's say a commerce site or any type of platform is key, right? It's extremely hard to do because modal, all these data sources don't talk to each other, right? So network doesn't necessarily talk to fraud. You don't necessarily stitch together analytics data, but understanding, I sound like a broken record, but understanding it holistically and really tying it in together is 100% key. And the reason I'm so passionate about what we do at Yofi. I also think this whole notion of generative AI, again, I'm like gagging at these words, um, is really important because now you're going to see more and more abuse and fraud, which is going to be really hard to determine if it's a good actor or bad actor, right? Because everything's going to sound more human and automated, where it's going to be a hard line to find if it's genuine person or not. And I think it's going to be a really interesting landscape in the next few years. Absolutely. And the people who are waiting and testing, if you think about synthetic identities, some people create synthetics right away. And those are a lot easier to detect because they're very shallow. The people who take years and multi-platform build these out becomes harder to detect. And that's what really scares me the most about Gen AI today. Obviously, people can change and do it at scale, and we're going to try to rush it right now because people are still kind of figuring out and learning how to navigate, how to detect it even. But the people who are waiting and crafting today, building these non-shallow Gen A profiles, what will that become over three to five years? The people who are patient, how's that really kind of changed to what you're doing? It's core. It's always understanding that intentionality and understanding how these users are interacting, right? So let, like, let's take customer support, right? There might be a huge influx of customer support, people checking, saying, hey, I never got my package or hey, like I want a discount. They're all going to have something similar. That's what's nice about these bots and bad actors is there's always a cluster of similarity. And so it's just understanding their intentionality, how they're interacting, let's say, with a site. Even if they have the smartest like LLM behind them, there's always going to be some fingerprint that you'll be able to detect. You're not going to, if anyone in ML says that you're going to detect all, they're lying right away, but it'll be interesting to see the patterns and the stickiness that come out. Is there a specific data point that you usually kind of think of around to build the core of your foundation about? It's, it really depends on the site. Like we work primarily with commerce and it depends which part of the commerce stack, but like customer support, you'll see, you'll see the patterns of their words are extremely similar. So we're already seeing, like you said, like the people who are automatically using generative AI to like spam and ask for discounts. It's almost the same wording, almost the same pattern each time. So it's understanding like the natural language and how that differs from humans. But again, really depends on which part of the commerce stack we're talking about. Awesome. I love it. Before we wrap up today, is there any parting advice you'd want to leave for the fraud community? Just keep fighting the good fight. I know <laughs> it's really cliche and I know it sucks to be like, oh, this is important right now. This is a cost center. Like, just keep using your voice. Your voice is most important and it should be viewed holistically through the company. I know when I was in your position, it was extremely exhausting, had a lot of breakdowns and tears over <laughs> it. But again, it's the most important thing any business can honestly focus on. Yeah, and I think the main piece today really to think about is the holistic approach. I've used this term multiple times today, but really honestly, thinking about the different points, the different interactions of how these users or events are occurring throughout your user journey, and they can give you signals or clues into developing what really is the identity there. So building that kind of your into your approach to detection more importantly your education educating of your stakeholders leadership so they actually understand what why we exist as a whole within our community alex i appreciate you connecting today and joining us how can they learn more about you where can they find you yeah you're more than welcome to message me on linkedin i'm very active same with yofi ai it's just my name at yofi AI. Yofi.ai, always happy to talk, talk fraud, talk anything. Always here to support. And Brian, thank you so much for inviting.